Their plan, Maganomics, is more extreme than anything America has ever seen before. They're back at it again, breaking their commitment, threatening, threatening more cuts and threatening to shut down government again this month. Now, what they do talk about is claiming all these cuts are going to reduce the deficit. When it comes to reducing deficit, let's compare the records a little bit. Under my predecessor, you remember the self-professed king of debt? Well, it turned out he was. He's actually the emperor of debt. <laughs> he created more debt than any other president did in one year. That's President Biden discussing a possible government shutdown and what he calls maganomics during a speech last week in Maryland. Joining us now to discuss the potential impact of a shutdown and much more is U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Secretary Yellen, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Let's start there with a potential shutdown. We are, by my math, 11 days away from the deadline of September 30th, a week from Saturday, to get a new budget through and to keep the government from shutting down. I think a lot of people talk about this in political terms with Brinks and all the rest, but from where you sit at Treasury, what would a government shutdown mean to the economy? Well, look, there's absolutely no reason why we should have a government shutdown. Uh, Democrats in both the House and the Senate and Republicans uh, in the Senate are ready to pass appropriations bills or a continuing resolution to keep the government open and operating for the American people. Uh, Speaker McCarthy needs to find a way to do his job, which is um, to pass a continuing resolution or bills. So there's no reason. We've got a good, strong economy. It has a lot of momentum. Inflation is coming down. The labor market remains very strong. We really don't need a shock to the economy in the form of a slowdown. There's no reason for it at all. And yet, typically, we maybe come up to the 11th hour, but there is a deal struck to avoid a shutdown. If that doesn't happen here due to the internal politics in the Republican Party, what happens to the economy? What would you say from Treasury? Well, we have not tried to estimate the impact of a shutdown. It would depend, importantly, on how long it lasts. But, um, again, there's really no good reason why there should be a shutdown. Uh, when the debt ceiling was raised, an agreement was struck uh, about that would serve to uh, lower the deficit by about a trillion dollars over the next decade. And um, we should just adhere to the bipartisan agreement that was struck. Okay, Madam Secretary, front page of the uh, Wall Street Journal, um, talking about uh, rising oil prices posing a risk to an economic soft landing. So oil prices, inflation coming down, to use your words, not down, but coming down in a hot economy. What do you say to the Wall Street Journal's concerns that a soft landing might be at risk? Well, I think we're really on a good path toward a soft landing. And net over the last year, if you go back to last summer, uh, when oil prices peaked, gas prices are down a dollar twenty a gallon. But um, it's true that oil prices um, have risen recently. Gas prices are up somewhat. That's not desirable. I think it reflects in part Saudi Arabia's a decision to continue uh, oil, oil supply cuts uh, that it put into effect earlier. And of course, the ending of the pandemic in China, even though China's growth is slower than expected, has raised demand for oil. So oil prices are up somewhat. Um, my hope is, and uh, I think what you see built into market expectations, is that they'll stabilize or move down over time, and um, that's my hope and expectation. So, Madam Secretary, of course, we're on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly right now. You just touched upon a few international concerns, but as you survey the globe here and speak to uh, your contemporaries and other nations, Give us your assessment of where the global economy stands right now, but most importantly, are there any flashpoints or warning signs you see around the globe that could eventually lead to trouble for here, those of us here in the United States? Well, actually, the global economy is proving more resilient um, than was expected by major organizations like uh, the IMF that 
uh, forecast um, slow glo very slow global growth. Um, Germany technically is in recession. It's had several quarters of negative growth. But overall, Europe is holding up better in spite of big increases, surges in energy prices, and we're seeing tight monetary policy to bring down inflation um, in many developed countries. But the United States is enjoying um, slower growth than during the recovery phase, but remarkable job creation, strong consumer spending, and that um, even with uh, inflation coming down, I think we're on a path toward wh what you might call a soft landing. Now, China, uh, China has both short-run and long-run long issues in its economy. Um, its, its recovery from the pandemic has been less robust than was expected, and of course, its property sector is suffering from um, a decline in uh, home prices and over indebtedness of many developers that really pose some significant financial threats, longer term uh, negative population growth, slowing productivity growth. So policymakers in China face some challenges. They do have some policy space to be able to address them, and it's my hope that they will do so effectively. There could be some spillovers to the United States, but I believe they're relatively small. It's countries in Asia that are likely to be more affected. Madam Secretary, um, I want to go back to the, the, the rosy picture that you just painted of the U.S. economy with inflation coming down and unemployment coming down um, and, and answer the riddle that the White House is finding so befuddling, which is with those good numbers, why are polling amongst the American people so pessimistic about the economy? And I'm wondering if it's that they just having been through a period of inflation, they fear that inflation might come back again, those high oil prices that Mika was talking about. The OECD is forecasting slower growth next year, something like 1.3%, I think, for the US. Is it is it just fears about the future? I, I don't, I'm not asking you to play therapist with the American voter, but there seems to be a disconnect between the numbers we're seeing and the way people are feeling about the economy, and how do you I account for it? I, I agree with you that there's a disconnect, and um, I don't have a simple and convincing answer. But Americans have been through a lot. The pandemic really took a toll on American families, on children, on households. Um, we are enjoying a remarkable recovery, but um, also with high inflation, much of it reflecting supply bottlenecks that developed uh, during the pandemic and then with Russia's brutal um, attack on Ukraine, we saw a surge in uh, gas prices, in food prices. Um, so Americans have um, been reeling from high inflation. They do realize in polls that it's coming down. and. Americans' financial situation actually improved uh, during the pandemic. Uh, interestingly, when Americans are asked about their own personal financial situation, they're positive on that. Um, the negative results you cite mainly reflect their answers to how is the economy more broadly doing. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to take some time. Uh, we've had a trifecta of legislation that President Biden and Congress have passed that um, we're investing in America in ways we haven't for decades. Um, a bipartisan infrastructure bill that Americans are going to be seeing um, roads repaired, bridges rebuilt, um, improvements in their ports and their airports, in public transportation, in the grid. Um, a semiconductor and chips bill that is leading to enormous investments across the country in semiconductor manufacturing and, of course, in a critically important Inflation Reduction Act that's leading to massive investments in the clean energy economy that will both um, lower 
carbon emissions in the United States, but also create enormous numbers of good jobs in parts of the country that have really been missing out on growth. You know, what's happened over the last decade or so is that the growth the United States has enjoyed has been concentrated in certain parts of the country, particularly the coasts, and big parts of the country have been missing out. And that's beginning to change. We've seen, since the beginning of the Biden administration, $500 billion worth of investment in manufacturing that has been announced and is being undertaken that is going to be creating a really good set of manufacturing jobs throughout the country, and particularly in areas that um, have been missing out on growth and seen declining wages for a long time. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, thank you very much for being on the show this morning. Thanks for your insight. Thanks so much for having me. All right, up next.